welcome to the Lighthouse Podcast. We're so excited to have you here. Whether you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or watching here on YouTube, really, really, really excited to have you here. Uh, the Hub has taken all sorts of forms, a live stream on Tuesday nights. We've had it in the Life Center. It's been a podcast. And uh, we know that where connection happens where is where growth happens. So we want the Lighthouse Hub to always be a place where Lighthouse family comes together to connect. So... Um, through the series of the book of Ephesians, we're going to accompany the messages with a shorter podcast with discussion questions because we want to grow higher. We want to go, we want to go deeper and we want to get stronger. And a lot of how that happens is in community. So I'm really excited about our conversation that we have today. I'm excited about, as you see, the game that is going to be taking place later tonight, but that's a, that's another conversation. That's another topic of discussion. Um, Hey, Why don't you grab a a Bible, a pen, a notebook, and even grab a friend, because we're going to jump into a conversation about a message that I shared this Sunday, and our prayer is that we wouldn't just spectate, because we know that there's always more value in participating. So we've got some discussion questions at the end of the conversation. Me and Sebastian are going to get into some really great things, and I'm really excited that you are here to tune in with us. And uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. Welcome, we want to welcome you to the Lighthouse Hub Podcast. My name is Philip. And my name is Sebastian, and we are so excited to start this conversation about the message that we received yesterday, and the title of this message was It Down on Me. Yes, yes. I was really, really excited to give the message this Sunday. Um, I threw down a challenge to all you Vikings fans out there. Today is, we're recording this on Monday. And the Vikings versus my favorite NFL team, the Eagles, are playing tonight. So by the time you're watching this, you're either going to be e- even more salty that I'm wearing this jersey or you're going to be laughing at me because on the off chance that, I don't know. Probably laughing. Probably uh, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm excited to. I'm excited to have given the message on Sunday. I'm excited to go, go deeper on it. A couple of you, even after the... Uh, uh, the service, I had some people come up to me, man, I'm looking forward to the podcast this Sunday to, to go deeper. I was like, well, that's, that's great. That's what the podcast is here for. So yep. I'm excited to be here with you, Sebastian, and uh, to go, go a little bit deeper in it. Yes, yes. I think uh, we had a really great message from God mm. to you, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I think we're going to have a great conversation. Mm-hmm. And remember that we are starting this conversation and the plan is that you can share more about your heart with other people and have and go deep in this conversation in your house. Yeah, yeah, that is definitely the plan. We would love for you to, yes, share this podcast and to be blessed by it. Like, of course, we would love for every single one of you listening uh, to be blessed and encouraged because that's what God does. God's word does it all. It never returns to us void. Yep. It, it builds us up on the inside. And the best part of getting built up on the inside on the inside is to build up others. So I'm excited. Let's just jump right into the scripture that we covered. And then uh, we have a a short couple of thoughts we'll share with you, share your way, and then stick around for the end because we will have some discussion questions for you, some specific discussion questions that you can take. We we ask you many weeks prior to say, hey, talk to somebody, talk to somebody. But we here at Lighthouse want to give you specific questions um, to, uh, to, to talk and to have conversation. If you want to skip everything that we say and grab the grab the questions at the end and, and have a conversation, read the by, script. By all means, do that. They'll be in the they'll be in the description underneath yep. the YouTube video, and they will also be posted in our Lighthouse Connect yep. Facebook page. And we would love to to see you over there uh, today. If you're watching this, it's live on that Facebook on that Facebook group. So, but let's jump yep. into Ephesians chapter one, verse fifteen. Yep through 23 you can read along with me uh it'll be on the screen for the visual podcast or just listen in so starting in verse 15 it says paul says for this reason because i have heard of your faith in the lord jesus and your love toward all the saints i do not cease giving thanks for you remembering you in my prayers 
Paul prays that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and, and above every name that is named. This is Jesus, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. He put all things under Jesus' feet and gave him head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Man, I love this scripture. Yeah, I love the scripture. It's so rich. I think the main point that we can pull from that from that message or from that uh, scripture and that I talk about in the message and kind of expound on is that the spirit of wisdom and revelation, which is the Holy Spirit, is for us to have hope in our calling, a renewed sense of value, and a fresh power flowing in and through our lives. So I'm, I'm really excited to get into the conversation today. Yes, and how we were saying in the beginning, make sure that you not only share this podcast, but you share your heart with someone else mm -hmm. and get a deep conversation about this special because we have many things here. Yeah. I think it's so important for us what Paul is telling us through this letter. So mm -hmm. we are so excited that you have this conversation with someone else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in this, in this series of the book of Ephesians, our hope is that we go higher In our, under, in our understanding, that we go deeper in our love and connection with God and with others, and then we ultimately get stronger. So, yep. so I am excited. One, one thing that, that Paul prayed is that we would increase in the knowledge of God. Yep. And he talks about this thing, wisdom and revelation. And that, that I know, and, and I hope that you know as well, and that we can go deeper in this idea, deeper in this idea that there's a difference between revelation and information. Paul didn't pray that we would have the spirit of information. Yeah. He wanted us to have <gasps> revelations. Oh, like this. Oh my gosh. Moments. I know I've been in reading in the word or even just having a conversation with this guy right here. Uh, and he speaks something to me uh, and the Lord is speaking through him. And I go, Oh my goodness. I needed to know that all my life. And I'm just now hearing it now that, that, that fresh moment of, of whenever I see a new image of Jesus's face and I can get to know him a little bit more. And you were talking, you were talking Sebastian about like the difference between like having a revelation of God's face or seeking his hand. That's like a, that's, that's a, a phrase in Christian culture. What would you, what would you say to that as a, as like an idea? How would you describe that idea? Yes. I mean, I think it's really important that we can see the difference between seek the hand of God mm -hmm. and his face, because mm -hmm. sometimes we are thinking that we are seeking God and we just are seeking his hand. Oh, okay. Uh, we see many times in the Bible when Jesus uh, was here in the earth, that mm -hmm. the people was following him and he go back to them and he told them, tell them, Hey, you are following me because you want the, that I multiply the bread again. Yes. But not yes, because yes, 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 yes. you already understand the sign miracle signs that I made. Because when we understand the miracle signs that God made for us, mm. the blessings that he gave us, and we understand that, is when we understand deeply in our hearts mm -hmm. who is God and who is him yeah, for yeah, yeah. us. I don't know if you remember in the Bible, yes. when the Bible speaks about Esau and his brother Jacob, mm -hmm. yep, Jacob, that they burned in the same time, so they were twins, mm -hmm. but Esau born first so he have uh his born rights yes like he have many blessings for that and all of these things responsibilities too but he have this privilege mm -hmm. to, to be the first son of isaac mm -hmm. and the bible tell us that in hebrews that we don't have to be like him because mm -hmm. he changed his inheritance With a plate of um, lentils, lentils or beans. or beans, you know. So he changed who he is just for a blessing. 
He was changing that. And I, I, I don't know if you remember Moses. When God is so tired with the people of Israel, <laughs> he's like, oh, my God, these people. <laughs> and he said, okay, if you want the promised land, I'm going to send an angel with you, but I don't going to go with you. That means that God is telling to Moses, I'm going to give you the promise that I made to you, but you don't going to be anymore my people. And Moses, he said, hey, no, God, if you don't go with us, I don't want to go to any place yeah. because he knows that the true inheritance that we have yeah. is not the blessings of God. Mm. It's him yeah. in us. When he abides in us, when how in the Bible said, I am yours and you are mine. Yes. That is the true inheritance that we really have. So good, Sebastian, because um, revelation of his hand, whenever God moves in our life, multiplies bread, multiplies our finances and helps us, blesses us. That's wonderful. And he, we're his kids. So he does do that for us. Revelation of his hand blesses us, but revelation of his face transforms us. Like going back to the story of Moses, when he came down off of that mountain, his face was shining. His life yeah was shining and whenever we spend time in his presence not just for the things that he give he gives us but when we have a revelation of who he is his character his face who he is how much what his love is for us that's when that's when like real change happens in our life so we can get unstuck from things that we feel like we're stuck by yeah that's yeah it's really good yeah and i think when he when we when he make a revelation of his can he's trying to make that revelation of his face mm. because he's trying to reveal who he is, how good he is with us. So but good. we can have that opportunity to really have a revelation of his face mm -hmm. or just of his hand. Yeah. Every opportunity, that is our opportunity to have revelation of his face, but the pain of us, mm -hmm. you know, and Philip, you shared with us three sections. And the first one was hope of your calling. Mm -hmm. What that means the hope of your calling yeah yeah I, i i think it's really cool how paul covered this in ephesians chapter one he said that i pray that you would have the spirit of of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him so that you would know those three sections right hope of your calling inheritance in the saints power of work within you and, and hope of your calling i was i'm a huge bible nerd so i looked into the greek and all the background and hope kind of like really spoke about like clarity like clarity and confidence um, and calling was basically like your purpose. And for us as Christians, we know that when our only purpose isn't just to live for 70, 80, 90, 100 years, if you're, if, if you're blessed here on earth, but our purpose is so much more than that. Mm. So I kind of just talked about internal calling, that that's, the, that's actually the primary thing. Like God, yes, saves us in our lives, but he saves our soul so that our soul can be with him. The only thing we get to take to heaven is our soul, is our spirit. And yep. so how are we going to how are we going to grow our soul? How are we going to protect our soul to make sure that it doesn't get infiltrated by the world and by sin or by other things? Our internal calling, our external calling is simply like what what you and I sometimes more automatically think about our calling. Preaching, teaching, mm -hmm. our jobs, working with kids, being a teacher um, having a Christian business, like an external calling. And then something that really will blow your mind if you let it <laughs> is our eternal call. Yep. The fact that we're going to live with him forever and we're going to be rewarded. We're going to have responsibilities. Um, we're going to have all of these uh, like things that we don't even know what they are yep. on the other side of. How they going to look. Yeah. Uh, you know? What What's the scripture? Um, is that no eye has seen, no ear has heard what uh, the Lord has prepared for those who love him. And because all of that's, all that's on the other side and we're going to, and we're going to experience it. Uh, we're going to experience it for sure. And how we experience it and what we get to be rewarded with and blessed with is according to how we walk out our daily lives now. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's, that's really cool that Paul knows that we need the spirit of the, of, wisdom and revelation to know that because that's some deep deep stuff yeah 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 mm -hmm. that's true mm -hmm. and um and the main thing is 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 grace like we need grace to live our calling out and because god um because god thinks of our calling 
completely different than we think of our own calling sometimes. No. Um, what do you think God gives us so that we can walk out our calling in different areas? What do you, what, what do you think, what are your, some of your thoughts about our calling and what God gives us to do so? Yeah, I mean, uh, the Lord know better than us what we need. Mm-hmm. And he always give, he is giving us grace to live what he called us to live. That's really good. And I, th- I see many examples in the Bible that God give he is giving grace and love mm-hmm. but this looks different for depending of the people okay for example uh, the sinners of the age of Jesus he was sharing with them food he was praying for them mm-hmm. he made miracles for them and that was grace for them yeah you know but when Jesus was confronting the religious people of that age mm-hmm. he was loving them too That was the grace that they needed for that time. Wow. Because they have to repent. If they don't repent, they don't enter to the kingdom of God. So you're so, saying, you are saying that God, I mean, we know that God gives us grace so that we can, so that we have the ability to walk out our calling because he does things for us that we can't do for ourselves. Yep. He gives us grace. And grace looks like love, acceptance, these sorts of things and and. I love that. Grace also looks like correction when we need correction and yeah. and these and that confrontation was grace on their behalf. I, and I'm going to go more like that That's like really this. Cool. Love That's really cool. Love looks idea. like discipline sometimes. And mm-hmm. we can see it in Hebrews too. Mm-hmm. Love looks like discipline. That mm-hmm. when God if God loves us, he's going to discipline us mm-hmm. because we are his his children. So when for example, Jesus was telling to the Pharisees He was telling them, hey, you are, I don't know, what do you remember that was the strongest thing he that said, he... He said they were whitewashed tombs. He said that they were like full of dead man's bones. He said that, yeah. <laughs> he said that yes. they were brood of vipers. He said all of these things. He yes. said a lot of things. All of these things was because <laughs> trying to shake these people yeah. and wake up. Mm-hmm. And they can repent for that because if they keep thinking that they are good enough to go to the heaven without him, lost, they're going to lose them lives. Yeah. So Jesus, well, he was loving these people too. He was putting grace over them. But he gave every person what the person need, not what they wanted. And that makes sense. That makes sense, Sebastian, because like whenever you think of, I, we think of our kids, you, your two sons and my daughter, Francesca, she's one years old, so she's just now getting to the point where I'm needing to like, discipline her and correct her because she'll want to do something and that she's not supposed to do throw mashed potatoes or <laughs> all of these things <laughs> and like i'm disciplining her or correcting her in her childhood stage so that when she's an adult which will be actually a longer portion of her life she'll be able to be the person that god designed for her to be and that that i want that i want her to be and all these things so i'm not disciplining her for nothing i'm not correcting her for nothing i'm correcting her so she can become something Yeah. And when you look at it in, here in our lives, our hundred years, let's say we all live a hundred years, is such a small portion of yeah. who we're eternally going to be. And and living for eternity, living for with heaven in mind will help us make sense of discipline, correction, difficulties, whatever we go through in this life. Because if we, I said it on Sunday, if we live for, if we live for just now, That's not going to um, bear the fruit. We're not going to live the life that God wants us to live. But if we if we don't live heavenly minded, we'll only live earthly average. That's yep. I think something something along the lines of what I said. And we're only going to live a moderate. We're not going to do anything that is of substance or of value for the Lord if we're not thinking about the fact that we're going to live forever with Him. And all of the discipline is for that. All of the all of the correction is for that. All of the yeah. times we spend in his presence in the short time is for that. Yeah, that's true. And the second section was the inheritance in the saints. Yes, 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 yes. How does it make you feel you are the inheritance of Jesus? I think that's a really good question. I uh I my prayer is that is that People, people on Sunday or people as they take this scripture and, 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 and go in their lives is that this really would affect them in their feelings. I know how affected I was or how affected I am anytime I 
have a have a new revelation of 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 God's view on me. Evelyn talked a lot about it um, uh, the Sunday before about our identity that we're loved and chosen and, and these sorts of things. Um, but whenever we realize our value that that we are hmm. the inheritance of Jesus, we're the we're the joy that was set before Him so that He could endure the cross. I think this should definitely help uh, affect our feelings. That's another way that that's another way to measure is this information that I'm just receiving or, or is it, was this, was this, is this a revelation? Is this something that the Holy spirit is breathing life on? Because information doesn't affect us in our emotions. If I were to tell you how tall the Eiffel tower is, it's not going to, it's not going to hit you in your heart and cause you to be humbled and be obedient to God. It's just information. The Eiffel tower is, I don't even know how, how many feet tall, but whenever you realize the 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 weight and the depth of something about God, oh my gosh, that really affects us. That's going to change the way how you live. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. That is, I think because it change the um, way you live. Yes, when you really understand this, you're gonna live different. Oh, God loves me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I know that. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. really easy for for us to know things in our head, but not to, for it to hit it in our hearts. And that's yeah. why it takes the spirit to 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 speak things to us and it's and it isn't something that that only strong christians get to have or only christians only perfect christians have it's for all of us it's yeah. we are all his inheritance yeah. we're all have god's power working in our life so yeah. so yeah yeah i think that's really cool and then uh, the power uh the, the third section that is in that scripture ephesians 1 17 18 19 is the power of god um, and the power of God sometimes is big. Sometimes it's shaking and, and, and life changing. And it's those moments where we journal about, and it's this big revelation moments. But a lot of times, I'd say more times than, than the other, than any other times, the power of God working in our lives is, is small little moments. Small little moments is the power of God. And, um, and I think that's misunderstood in a lot of people's lives. I know I have misunderstood, mistook the, power of God for something little. Um, can you think of an example of, of the power of God in even just a small way working in your life or your family's life or or a, a small example when it was God working in your life? I mean, in many different moments, but for example, I we saw when, for example, he healed my son. Mm. That was a great example. He healed from a weird sickness that he get. Uh but also I can see in every day yeah. that in the way that we can go in the presence of God mm-hmm. and enter to pray with him and feel his presence mm-hmm. and and see my family, that is the power of God. Yeah. In in the in the things that we think that are coming for us. Mm-hmm. But we can see the power of God through this mm-hmm. uh, i remember this is uh like f- maybe for many people is a r- pretty small uh yeah, miracle, yeah, yeah but for example i remember one day uh, my wife is telling me that uh she won a gin from walmart and at that moment we didn't have a uh, the enough budget to buy it, that gin. Mm-hmm. And I remember she's telling me, oh, it's so nice, and it's mm-hmm. all of these things. Mm-hmm. And we are walking to the enter of Walmart, and she found $1. Oh, my goodness. And she get the dollar from the floor, and she said, oh, it's my first time here in the United States that I found <laughs> money on the floor. <laughs> and she's so excited, you know? She's like, there's money, God. And, there's money everywhere here. <laughs> <laughs> and... When we enter, normally she she do this. I, I don't know if she gonna see this part, but <laughs> <laughs> when we enter to a store, she go to start to see the things that she like it, and I go with the kids to see toys or things like that. Yeah. So after thirty minutes, she appear with one jean that was the jean that she wanted, and she told me, "Hey, look, Sebastian, this the jean that I wanted." Now it's in clearance in one dollar. No way. So Look at that. It's like <laughs> you are like, really, God? You listen to things like this? Wow. Um God is present in every moment and his power mm-hmm. is for us in every moment. Yeah. 
That's so cool. That's such a cool story. I'm so glad you shared that. You can be like, hopefully, yeah, if if uh, Val listens to this, she's like, don't tell everybody that I the, what kind of jeans I like to wear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Well, we hope that um, I hope and I, I pray that as we look at the book of Ephesians, that it can just be a a, a challenge for us. I, I I pray that as we go into these deep things that that Paul shares, they're so deep and they're so rich, but. I, I would hate that we only go through 10 weeks or, or, or nine weeks of the book of Ephesians and it's only head knowledge. That's not what Paul wants. That's not what we want. That's not what, that's not what we want for you. And that's not what the Lord wants for you. The Lord's yep. heart is that we would experience him. Yep. And, and, and I, I just want to ask you all a couple of questions of, um, of application just to kind of, just to kind of look at our own lives, maybe check in with somebody else in, in your own sphere of influence, maybe your wife, or your husband, or or a a, fa- a friend, or a family friend. I just want to ask you all this, these couple of questions. Uh, they will also be typed out in the description, and they will also be in our Facebook, uh, con- or our Lighthouse Connect Facebook group. So I want to ask you. I want to ask you these questions. I want you to ask yourself these questions. In what area of your life? Excuse me. In what areas in your life do you want God to change from information to a revelation? Um, when you think of your internal calling, shared about that on Sunday. If you want some more information on that, you can you can check out the message. If when you think about your internal calling, in what ways can you invest more time into it? How can you invest more time into your true, your primary calling, your internal calling? And uh, in what ways? Would you like to see the power of God move in your life? Because we know most times the thing that's stopping God's power from moving is our own selves, our own willingness and openness and our cooperation with it. So in what ways would you like to see the power of God move in your life? So we hope uh, we hope this podcast is a is a blessing to you. We hope that you share and and all in and, and all these things, but we also hope that this can spur you on to have a conversation with somebody else. Um, Before we leave, we just want to pray over you. We just want to bless you wherever you are, driving in your car, listening in the living room, doing some errands. We want to pray over you. Sebastian, would you want to pray over over our Lighthouse family listening today? Yeah, sure. And I would like to encourage you to to pray for your soul as Paul is praying for the church or Ephesians. Mm. Go deep in every verse that we already read and went deep. And pray this week in that way for yourself. Mm-hmm. And go and take these conversations that are going to help you to realize what is going on in your life and what you need to receive from God. Mm-hmm. And keep praying how Paul is praying. So let me pray in that way. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord, that you. we know that you are with us, Lord. And we pray to you that you can pour out the spirit of revelation and knowledge of you, Lord. Thank you. Help us to understand who you are, Lord, and who we are for you, Lord. Lord, we pray that we can understand what is the power that is coming for us, Lord, that appear in you, Jesus, to resurrect you from the dead. But now that power is in us, Lord. I pray that we can understand and really have a revelation from you and of all of these things, Lord, and not just information, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, and we say thank you. We bless your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, thank you, Sebastian. I uh, I was thoroughly blessed from our conversations on the front end of this co- of this conversation. Even every time I get to sit down with this guy, I really... I have a revelation of, of, of a new way of looking at God. So thank you. No, thank you. And please make a comment yes, about yes, yes, what yes, yes. things God is speaking, is speaking to you through the conversation that mm-hmm. you are having in your home, in your office, wherever you are with the people that is around of you. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So same time, same place. We'll see you this Sunday at 10 a.m. And we'll see you back here at the podcast next wednesday so we love you and we'll see you over at the facebook connect group for those discussion questions and we'll see you next time